if you are submitting any type of article to a journal, then you need to be using some form of citation manager. This is because different journals require different citation referencing styles. So if you, for whatever reason, change where you submit your paper, you're not going to want to go through every citation and change the format. Another reason for using a citation manager is when you then receive feedback on your paper and you have to make changes which might change the order in which your citations come in the paper. You might have to remove some or add some. And if these are numbered citations, then it can be a really manual process to change all of that. Whereas a citation manager will do all of that automatically for you. So in this video, we can do a step-by-step -step guide to using Zotero. Zotero is a free online citation manager, really easy to use. And I really recommend integrating it into your writing and citing process. Okay, so let's search for Zotero. And I've just got a brand new laptop, so I'm going to join in step-by-step -step on this. So I am going to download Zotero for Windows. I'm also going to install the Chrome connector. We'll see later when I do some examples that that is really, really useful. So now we'll just run the setup and use the standard installation options. And let's click finish and launch Zotero immediately. So here we have our Zotero platform. We have our library. Obviously right now we have nothing in there. So I'll just straight away do one quick example of how we might want to add a file to our Zotero library. So here we've got an example of a paper. I want to import this into my Zotero library. There's lots of different ways I could do it, but I think the best one is to use the DOI. This is the digital object identifier. So I'm going to copy link address. And if I go back to Zotero, so I can see here the plus button, I have the option to add a new item. And if I add a journal article like this, basically I can use this format, but it's very manual process. Whereas here, if I use the identifier, you can see like the magic wand symbol here. This is where we can add DOIs or ISBN. And so if I copy that in there, we can see immediately it's filled in all the information. I definitely suggest checking all the information that you have here that it populates. One thing I've noticed that Zotero is not great with is the journal abbreviation. And we can see this here with the International Journal of Sports Physiology and Performance. That's obviously just the full journal name. So we can just go in and adjust that, which I'll do in a moment. But that is a really quick way there to import an article into our Zotero library. Now, actually, where I've used Zotero on a different computer, I've already set up my Zotero account. Again, this is completely free, but it allows you to sync your library to the cloud. And so that's obviously really useful if you're changing devices as well as to use as a backup. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to log into my account and then we will see a library that's populated with more examples of articles. Okay, so now you see my Zotero library from my online account as updated here now into this. So we have the title, which we can order it A to Z, or we've got the author, the creator. One thing I really love about Zotero is if the free text PDF is available, when you add it to your library, it adds the PDF here as well. Now, if we scroll down to that Impelizari item, what I want to have a look at, if we can change the journal abbreviation, And you can see here, well, actually, okay, so here's a great example of a mistake. I've tried to update this as I've gone through, and clearly there's a couple of different examples here. Perhaps it's my mistake, perhaps it's different versions. I think I'll probably own up to that one. I think it's physiol form. Okay, so we're going to update that. And now that's correct. And other options along here, we have also got the ability to attach a link. So if Zotero doesn't do that, or if you have the papers downloaded as a file on your own computer, you also have the ability to link those together. Okay, so now I want to show how we integrate this into our documents. And so I've got an example, some text I've just quickly written here with some different references. We can see immediately, I have not done anything that you haven't seen. 
but Zotero now is integrated into Word. So here we have the Impelizari citation. That was that first example that I put into Zotero, I imported into our library. So now I want to add the citation. It's first of all going to ask us for our citation style. And here I can manage styles to get more options. So because again, this is a new installation, we will have to add our citation styles from the journal articles. So if we go to get additional styles, we then have the ability here to search. So let's go for strength and conditioning. Okay, JSCR, one style found. So immediately there it is added that option to our style manager here. And this is one of the reasons it's so useful as we will see momentarily. So we're going to use JSCR's style. So now we get this little Zotero pop-up box and that is connected to our library. So here we're going to type in, we're going to look for Impelizari internal and external training like 15 years on and enter that into our paper. We can see that it's replaced it. It does not automatically add your reference list. So add your bibliography. So what I'm going to do to demonstrate that now I'm going to add our bibliography and we can see straight away here, our reference has been added in the style of JSCR. That simple. Let's add a title. Okay. Let's have a look and see, cause you may not know off the top of your head. Okay. Do I have this paper in there? I know this is Shona Halser monitoring training load to understand fatigue in athletes. I've searched for it. Great. It's in my library. I'm going to add it. And we can see already that the JSCR style is obviously alphabetized. And so Housen has become number one automatically. Impelizari has become number two. Okay, with this next citation, let's have a look. Torres Ronda, this is the paper I was involved with, with Lorena, where we talked about using tracking technology in different team sports. And let's see. Okay, it's not currently in my Zotero library, but... What I've done here then, as I've gone through, I have made a note here of the PubMed file. So let's look at a couple of different ways that we can incorporate this. Okay, so here is the paper. So remember, I just found this in PubMed. I'd kept a note in the comments of the URL. So we've seen earlier, copying the DIY will add it into our library. We can also see here the PMID and that will also copy it into our library. So we could just copy and paste that. But what I want to do now is show you the Chrome extension option. So here, after we've downloaded and installed Zotero, the website is encouraging us to use it anyway, and I've installed it. So now I just need to integrate into my Chrome. So we can see now the Zotero connector. So I've just added it here so that pinned it to, to view. And we can see now this icon. So this is interesting. This icon changes. So we have this button here and you can see if we hover, it says save to Zotero. PubMed has access to this site. So saving to my library, it's nice. It's a PubMed entry and actually it's an open access PDF. So now if we go back to our Zotero library here, already highlighted for us, Torres Ronda with the PDF, with everything that we want already copied over at the click of a button. Thank you to edX Pro for sponsoring this video. edX Pro is a unique platform that connects teams and members to fill jobs using compatibility ratings and video profiles. Practitioners can sign up to build their profile page, including a unique profile video as well as to search the job board. Teams or sporting organizations can register to have access to the members and CVs when looking to recruit for roles and internships. So now when we add in our citation, this should work because this paper is now in our library. There it is. Okay, we can see Torres Ronda there added into the paper. So let's continue here. Let's add in repeat what happens here it's that with the house and paper we've already added it 
So we see it comes up double now because we it's in my library, but also now it recognizes it's already cited in the paper, which is going to come up first. So that knows it's going to give it a number one. It is that same reference there. So here I have an example where I'm adding in two citations into the same area. And again, so easy. We can do it in the same place, house and paper, and the Rainer Torres's paper. And actually here we've got the one and three together. Let's say we want to change this. We want to take out the house and citation. We can just go into edit that citation and we can take this one out. Oh, take the right one out. And that will now update. Now let's say we want to change the referencing style on our document. We're going to submit to a different journal. So we want to go to document preferences. Again, if you need to add the style, you go into manage styles and click on the plus button. In this case, for IJSPP, I know that they use AMA, American Medical Association Citation Style. You can find it on the author guidelines of journals. So what we're going to do is we're going to change our document to AMA. We can see immediately. So now, rather than being normal size numbers, we've got superscript numbers. We have got them rather than alphabetical order. We've now got them in the order that they appear in the text. And we've got slightly different referencing style here. So we can see that immediately that has updated at the click of a button so much quicker than doing it manually. Let's say we want to move some of these around now then. And for some reason, actually, we want to put that paragraph first. Well. It doesn't necessarily happen automatically, but what happens now, because we can see we're starting off with reference three, which is not correct for this referencing style. If we go to refresh, we can see now our references here, our in-text numbers, as well as our reference list here has updated again at the click of a button. Okay, so a few more tips for using Zotero now then. You can see here on the left, We've got a duplicate items option. So that's a nice way of immediately identifying, presumably deleting one of two when you've got duplicate items just to help keep your library tidy. You can also see here a folder called women's football, which has a subgroup of papers. And so we can create collections here on load monitoring, for instance. And we can keep our library organized by adding some papers to that collection. Add to collection here, load monitoring. And now a couple of things to look out for in terms of when you are adding papers to your library. So here I've got a book. We can see we've got the ISBN number here that we could copy and we could use our wizard to copy in. But we can also see here with our Chrome add-on that we can add it already to our library. One thing to be aware of here is keep note of what it saves it as. So it says there's snapshot. If I search here by title, you can see I'd already previously copied the details in as a textbook, but here, this is the one I've just copied in. And the item type here is a blog post. I think that's what that snapshot was. And you can see it's got limited details. So always go back through everything that you're adding in. In that case, then, rather than using the Zotero connection, I'd probably be best off copying the ISBN. And then let's see how that adds into it. So that we can see a duplicate now of that first one. Another thing to be aware of with textbooks is that often, if it's a textbook like this, you might be citing a specific chapter, so you might have to incorporate that into your detail. Really pay attention to this icon if you're going to use the Chrome connector. This is on ResearchGate, so fantastic paper on force plate jump monitoring from Chris Bishop, Matt Jordan and colleagues. And you can see on ResearchGate, the paper, and we've got, again, what looks to be a book. So let's add that. And you see it's a research gate link. Whereas now if we go to the paper actual page on the journal article, we can see this icon 
And I believe that is the icon for a journal article. So we've now got three versions of this of this text. I obviously have used it at some point previously. Uh, and we can see that they are all journal articles. We've got some differing information here. Again, this version here actually has most of the information from the journal, whereas here we've got it from just the published ahead of print version. So you want to definitely be checking the information as you go. It makes it much smoother and more efficient when you then come to use it. So I hope you were able to follow along, download Zotero and get up and running with using it. It will save you so much time in terms of automating your citations. So three top tips for using Zotero. Number one is register for a free online account so that your library is backed up and you can change between devices. Number two is to install the Chrome extension so you can be adding articles, papers, to your library as you go at a click of a button. Number three is to double check the information that is added to the Zotero library as you go. Otherwise, when you import it later into your Word document and you're going through or your reviewers are going through the accuracy of your reference list, that's when you're going to have to make changes to the fields that are stored for those references. So just easier to do it as you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit subscribe and keep a lookout for my next insights video.